as did Saul, as did Absalom, as did Ahab, as did Jeroboam, says the Lord. Men who were seat warmers, but were not anointed by me, that's capitalized the Lord of hosts, to lead a nation. They attempted to steal, kill, and destroy for such, says the Lord, for the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, all capitals. But I, the Lord your God, have come to give life and life more abundant. And their exploits of attempting to slaughter and pillage for their seat ended in judgment against them. And the spirit that allured them into such, for this is an ancient ruler of the darkness that is attempting in this hour to do such again. However, the people, says the Lord, all capitals, the people of your nation, humble yourselves before me, almighty God, your deliverer, your banner, your righteousness. Humble yourselves before me. Put on your full armor of God. Touch and agree for your nation to be delivered. And the one whom I have anointed will take their rightful seat to finish a race that started over eight years ago, says the Lord. The indictments from hidden courts and in the kingdom of darkness against the people. One man indicted over and over to indict the people to attempt to release a spirit of fear upon the people, to submit to plans and intentions not of me, says the Lord. The indictments are beginning to turn, says the Lord. That serpent is beginning to turn, and it shall bite those that attempted to utilize it for self-glorification, elevation, and placation, says the Lord. Thus says the Lord, once that serpent turns and begins to constrict those who released such a devious spirit, it shall constrict their titles, their reputations, their plans, and what shall befall them shall be greater than what they attempted to do to this nation, the people and leaders I have anointed. For there is a Zerubbabel in this nation. He remember, he was the governor. He was the governor that helped rebuild. I believe it was in Nehemiah. And I believe he was mentioned in Ezra too, potentially. For there is a Zerubbabel in this nation. There is more than one, says the Lord. However, one in particular, that I, the Lord, have chosen, one who looks upon the runes of the nation and with the vision from me that's capitalized, the Lord sees beyond it, has the faith to stand in one of the highest offices in the land and assist in ushering faith back into the capital, into a white house that Ichabod, that's all capitalized, that means the glory has departed, that Ichabod has been written upon, as well as the judgments against those in a white house that is stained with the crimes that stretch across the oceans, that is smeared with the innocent blood, that is smeared with threats against Israel, attempting to put them on a short leash for secretly turning on capitals, my people, my firstborn, I, the Lord, shall hand you over to the destruction of the flesh that a soul may be saved. For I, the Lord thy God, have carved a different path, says the Lord, a path for this nation. It is not the same way, though it may be the same anointed leader. This way is active, is being actively carved and shall circumvent every trap, snare, and accusation that is brought, says the Lord. For I have anointed sons as well, says the Lord. There is a mantle upon one of the sons, says the Lord, a mantle for the nation, a mantle for faith. And this year that son and his family shall see the glory of God and the power of God in a way that turns him to me, that's capitalized, meaning the Lord, more and more. For he is chosen, says the Lord, to do my work. His wife, says the Lord, is chosen to do my work. And together they shall plow the fields of this nation and watch as I, the Lord, multiply what is being tilled. And says the spirit of the Lord this day, what the enemy attempts to steal and drain, what he attempts to take through the court of accusation, I, the Lord, thy God, am keeping record, and he shall be ordered to pay back sevenfold in due season. However, says the Lord, submit fully unto me, that's capitalized, meaning the Lord, and my plan and the way I, the Lord, shall do such. For I, the Lord, am your provider, not man. I am Jehovah Jireh, your provider. And though the accusations fly, they are coming before my court, says the Lord, the highest court. And the actions of men and women are being weighed in this hour and shall be dealt with accordingly for an attempted destruction of a foundation of a nation, its covenant, and a family. It is being weighed. So being the destruction of a foundation of a nation, the covenant, and a family. 
It is being weighed, says the Lord, and men shall tremble as they are dealt with, for I, the Lord, am the shepherd. How dare wolves come into my flock? How dare the church let them in, says the Lord, oh, capitals, to take my sheep as prey, says the Lord, as prey. How dare they offer them on an altar of perversion and lies because the dark deeds of the shepherds is being hung over their heads. And in this hour, says the Lord, all capitals, I declare for it all to come out. The sheep cannot be weak and sick and ill-equipped anymore because the shepherds have been tampering with the devil in the dark. Enough, says the Lord, enough. The church must be rebuilt from its ruins, capitals, and a unique remnant shall rise in this hour. A unique breed, says the Lord, that I am positioning an elevation to be the voice of a fiery truth, or elevating to be the voice of a fiery truth, says the Lord, that will make men quake under the powerful presence of capitals. My spirit, Ruach Elohim, the spirit of the living God, and forth from their mouths shall be the conviction, all capitals, this paragraph, that my word brings, for I am God, there is no other. And those who have challenged that in voice and in print shall see their judgments and consequences go forth as a ravager to what they have built upon a foundation of dark agreements. The locusts shall hunt them, says the Lord, and their crop and what they have accumulated in their storehouses, says the Lord, for prison doors open to Joseph because he was faithful and he pursued me even in the darkest of prisons. And that is why no man like him was found in all of Egypt. He was chosen, set apart, and the chains fell off and the prison doors opened. As that door opens this year, a measuring rod shall be dropped in America, in Israel, in Iceland, in England, in Germany, in Italy, in New Zealand, in Australia. And you shall see a deep separation where the dross, the heaviest, the darkest dross comes to the top for what they have attempted to hold down to keep their seat, all capitals. My wind shall come under it and it shall for my wind shall come under it and shall force it to the surface. And there shall be a great measuring, says the Lord. And as the people come together in me for their nations, it shall separate out the darkest of plans, purposes, acts, documents. What drives them, says the Lord, shall now be what removes them. And says the Lord of hosts. Come under my wings, my children, take refuge in me, that's capitalized, and though they attempt to throw stones and boulders to stop what I, the Lord, am doing, those stones shall turn to dust at my word, and those boulders shall split. For the reaping and stealing from this nation that goes back past 50 years. Well, there is a large barley loaf headed towards their camp. He's talking about the book of Judges. There is a large barley loaf headed towards their camp. And the judges shall tremble as well before me. For the judges were raised up in a time of Israel's bondage and oppression to a foreign nation. And those judges shall be elevated and equipped to do what I, the Lord, am asking them to do. This is heading for the camp of a wicked ring, a circle that goes round the globe. And there shall be key fractures and a breaking of the agreement as some wait to step into their shoes. It shall and will in a moment be taken from them. For those who plotted at Martha's vineyard shall pay a heavy price this year for their deeds. But at first it was spelled D-E-A-D-S. So I have that in parentheses. And they shall be paraded out before the people. For I gave you a chance to turn from your foreign gods and agreements with haters of my children. However, you did not heed Barak. You did not heed those in the highest offices. A garland around their neck shall not be a gift, but it is a woe, says the Lord. Be watchmen, my children. Make my word, that's capitalized, your foundation. Do not chase foxes and rabbits down holes of intel. For I, the Lord, am keeper of the secrets, and I tell them to who I can trust. For I, the Lord, do nothing until I first reveal, capitals, my secrets to my servants first, the prophets, and they shall be revealed to the people at appointed times. It is time to go deeper with me, that's capitalized, meaning the Lord, says the Lord, the superficial flesh that feeds, the superficial flesh that feeds you will wither you in this time. 
Pursue the holiness of my word and the meat, for I require it, says the Lord. The superficial will buckle under the heavy wind, says the Lord, for I, the Lord, am reviving my capital children in this time, and you shall go forth mighty in my, that's capital, name, that your nation and other nations and the souls of men may be saved. Thus says the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, my son, that's capitalized, who sits at my right hand and never ceases to advocate for you. Oh, I could feel it on me. As as I'm, I'm releasing this word, I could feel the presence of the Lord around me and in this place. So all glory goes to God for that. We will be putting it up on the blog. I know it's a lot. The Lord has a lot more to say. He has a lot more to say. Barbara told me that this morning to Amanda. The Lord has a lot more to say through you. This word is just a piece of it. So I receive that in Jesus name and we will see what the Lord, what the Lord continues to give in his mercy and in his time. So that was praise God. That was powerful. All glory be to God. So I want to say a few things about last night. So, well, Sunday night, we did that incredible night of prayer and all glory be to God. The presence of the Lord and the anointing was so thick. Don A wrote me and said the same thing. Um, I heard from, from Robin and his wife, Prophet Robin Bullock and his wife, Pastor Robin, um, that it was a monumental night and it was interesting. I will share a few things with you. I retweeted it on our Twitter, but Bo Polney sent me something very interesting, and I'm just going to read it to you quick because I just find it fascinating. Um, Let's see here. Okay, so I'm just getting up. This Sunday is at 777. Okay, so he's talking about uh, the Sunday we did the night of prayer. And he said, 77 years, seven months, seven days would be next Sunday. He said, January 21st, 2024, which would be, yes, I think that would be the Sunday, the week from the Sunday we did the night of prayer. And so he was talking about uh, basically that Trump is 77 years old, seven months and seven days old. So he was just sharing that with me. I did retweet it so you could see it. So you could go to our Twitter and find it. But I just wanted to share that with you quickly because I have a few other things to say. So we did that night of prayer. We came together. We saw something historic happen in Iowa. We did last night. Um, or, or or was it? I think it was last night. We saw last night something very historic happen and begin to happen and the people speaking loud and clear and i am going to say this that those in publications and in media that want to challenge god's plans right now that want to make their profit off of race baiting and division and want to accuse the people and want to accuse god's people Those are the publications and the media entities that are going to suffer this year. Why? Because they are openly, defiantly, and arrogantly challenging Almighty God in a way that is condemning his people, that are putting their mouths on his flock, that are trying to intimidate his shepherds. And the Lord is going to answer that. And you are going to see High profile reporters step down because of this. You are going to see parts of media entities fail. Particularly one that ends in BC. And if CNN wants to follow, wants to follow that sheep to the slaughter, wants to follow its example, wants to walk itself into a trap, then it's going to suffer the same this year because the Lord is is watching and weighing and judging publications. 
He is. He is watching and weighing. And you are going to see some very high profile reporters and people that have shows not only step down, but be humiliated by what came out of their mouths because they let the enemy bait them and the flesh and pride bait them into saying things they should have never said. The wind of almighty God is beginning to blow through this nation. God allowed for a time intentionally for what happened to happen in 2020. God allowed it. And he allowed it because it would have been more division. This now is about Saul being dealt with. David being put in as king to unify a nation. 2016 was to divide a nation intentionally, a plumb line, a measuring rod to begin to expose the depths and the underbelly of corruption and wickedness and darkness that was happening. Happening, 2020 would have been more division. God allowed it in order to allow the people to see the dark veil they were putting over the nation, to allow the people to feel it, that they may turn to God. Because to make America great again, you have to make America godly again. You have to come back to your creator. And the Lord allowed it, and he allowed this to happen in order that people may turn to him and he may expose the filth before the people that their nation has been smeared with so he could say to them, people of America, choose this day whom you will serve. Choose. He has laid it bare before us. This is our year to choose. This is the valley of decision. It's here. And we need to choose wisely. And we need to choose biblically. Because the voices of the believers that are coming together will rise in this nation for the name of Jesus Christ. For the almighty God, Adonai, the Alpha and Omega, is raising a standard in this nation. And he began to raise it in Iowa. And that standard is being raised and his people will come together and bear that standard. And the part of the church that wants to play with the devil in the dark, that wants to take part in his delicate dainties that are deceit, and then get on a pulpit and water down the word to the people that is making them sick, that part of the church will be separated out if it does not repent and come into line. That part of the church will be separated out. That part too, that is shrewdly manipulating the people. It's for God's glory. You are an instrument for his glory. Kim Clement, Prophet Kim Clement, love is family. Donna is precious to me. Said Trump shall become a trumpet. Do you know what a trumpet is? We all know it's an instrument, but it makes a noise. However, you need a skilled player of that instrument to play the notes in a way that comes out and makes something that grabs the attention of the people. We are instruments in the hands of God in this. And the church instead has given their instrument, part of the church, over for the enemy to mangle it and cause a sound to come from it that comes from the pits of hell. And they have allowed this. And they have caused the people to err. Elijah stood on Mount Carmel as he faced 400 And 50 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of Asherah. And the people. And he stood on Mount Carmel overlooking where Armageddon will take place. And he said, 
How long will you falter between two opinions? If God is God, choose him. If Baal is God, choose him. But choose. The Lord is saying the same thing right now to America. He's been saying it. How long, America, will you falter between two opinions? You know why? Because the devil's on the fence. Time to choose. This is the year of the valley of decision. That is going to decide where America goes. Into victory or into very, very dark, treacherous waters. And those that the devil is using in the media to confuse, to divide, to manipulate, to race bait, to harm people's thoughts, to bind them and make them think they are something other than what God created them to be. Let me tell you something. I could say I'm a carburetor, but if you put me under the hood in the car, I promise you it ain't going to run. I promise you it ain't going to run. Those that are doing this and that make their profit off of that, they are going to have their nakedness exposed publicly where not even their network heads will be able to salvage what they have done. What you have played around in in the dark and then come and spew to the people. The Lord is now going to shine that giant light of holiness on it. And it's going to expose where all the darkness is hidden, where all the dark deeds have been done. He is dealing with the media and the publications. And they can be as panicked as they want. They should be panicked right now. They're being weighed in the courts of heaven. If they knew the seriousness of this matter, they would clean up things real fast. When Ahab realized, King Ahab, he was being weighed in the courts of heaven because of what he did to Naboth. Turn the other way. Let Jezebel kill an innocent man. All for a vineyard. When Elijah, that judgment came down from the courts of heaven and Elisha spoke it, Ahab humbled himself before the Lord. And the Lord even said to Elijah, do you see how Ahab has humbled himself? Because Ahab had a moment of clarity where he understood the severity of the judgment coming for what he had done. Repent. Repent of what you're doing. Because right now, you are bringing what you think is a large weapon, but is something that is nothing in the hands of God. You think you have a way to challenge him. You have, think you have a way to say that you shall exalt yourself above the stars of heaven. You shall lift yourselves up. You shall ensnare this nation. You shall allure the people with words of soothsayers. You shall allure the people with words that sound intelligent. But what they are are snares and traps. And they're meant to hook into the soul and influence the mind. This is why we have to put on the full armor of God every day. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, according to Ephesians chapter 6, I ask you put your whole and complete armor on us this day. Every day. Because they're going to try a full court press. And you know what's going to happen for that? Because they wanted to take Naboth's vineyard. They wanted to try to kill the plans of God and those anointed. They shall be pressed this year. Gideon was hiding wheat in a wine press from the Midianites when God found him. Because Israel was being pressed. Because they had allowed in foreign gods and they had done what is detestable to God. 
And the Midianites came in for seven years. Isn't that interesting? And ransacked Israel in the book of Judges. I believe it starts in Judges chapter 7. And ransacked Israel and took all their barley for seven years. Put them into debt. Hurt their economy. Stole their resources. Because they turned from God. And they chased the Baals. They chased them. And what happened from that is Gideon was raised up. Deborah was a judge. Barbara was talking to me about the spirit. That spirit that was upon Deborah is coming upon certain people. Gideon was raised up as a judge. Samson was raised up as a judge. Many were raised up as judges in that time. But Gideon was raised up to help save a nation. And what happened from that is when the 300 men that God had chosen with their shofars and their clay pots went to camp and the Lord sent Gideon and his servant ahead. Gideon heard the dream that one of the Midianite soldiers had. That soldier must have had an anointing on them prophetically and just turned the wrong way. But this soldier had a dream and there was a giant barley loaf that came tumbling down, headed for their camp and landed on their tent and destroyed it. And the other one said, this could be no other than the sword of Gideon, knowing that God had already given them over and to the hands of Gideon and those 300 men. And that barley loaf represented everything they had stolen over the seven years, everything they had stolen, God's judgment, the joy of the Lord, the justice of Yahweh went out into the earth to now take it back. Everything they had stolen had come to account, had been weighed by God, had been measured, had been judged, and that judgment put on scrolls and sent into the earth because of a faithful remnant of 300 men that dedicated themselves to the Lord, his work, and were obedient from us over the past seven years. Because even while Trump was president, they were still trying to steal from us and and bind us and quarantine us and come after us. Everything they have stolen for seven years. When the Lord said that, that's what it represented. Everything they have stolen going 20 years back in this nation plus, it represented. There is a barley loaf headed for their camp, meaning it had gone out. And it was going to take a period of time for it to reach the camp of the corrupt in D.C. and in multiple states in this nation and in the heart of the nation. That barley loaf right now has picked up a lot of speed and is coming because everything that has been stolen must be returned in Jesus' name. It must be returned onto those who have humbled themselves before God, who have taken up his yoke, who are raising his standard. Yes, we will have a praying president. Yes, we will. Because when the yoke of God goes on a leader, they fully submit and they understand now the communication between them and God, how crucial it is. So remember these things. I feel the presence of the Lord so strong. Praise the Lord. Remember these things as we go through this year, because there will be turbulence. There will be turbulence. There will be a firestorm of attacks from the media. A firestorm. And you know what's going to happen? It's going to backdraft on them. There is going to be a backdraft to the media that will be historic. The likes of which has not been seen, says the Lord. It will. Because Almighty God is on the move. And the wind of His holiness and power is beginning to blow in this nation and it's going to pick up strength and speed and blow across the nation. We must humble ourselves before the Lord and serve him and go deeper with him right now. The same superficial candy that people are being fed, spiritual Christian cotton candy will not cut it in this season. You need the meat. You need to hear God for yourself. 
The prophets are there and the prophetic that when we put the word out, it draws you closer to the Lord and you can hear him for yourself. Because relying on superficiality daily, relying on on flimsy words and and watered down scripture is not going to cut it in this season. It's not. We need the meat of the word. The meat to go deeper with the Lord so we can run this race with excellence in a historic way for Almighty God and return to that covenant. That's like the book of Ezra. People had to reconsecrate themselves before the Lord and turn to that covenant. And it's time for us to do that in this nation. And as we do that, healing will go out. The Lord's oil will go out. And the wounds of the nation, the balm of Gilead will be poured upon them. And the sores will be treated. And the infections purged. And there will be healing upon the nation. Healing. Because we serve a God that actively heals and is still active in national matters. He does not sit up on his throne, close up shop, not talk to his children while the enemy is off talking to his people. He is almighty God. And we worship him in spirit and in truth. And that spirit of truth is going to go forth this year like a fiery arrow. It's going to go forth with precision. And that spirit of truth is going to destroy arguments that have been formed in high places. Spiritual wickedness in high places. That spirit of truth that is going to be put in the mouths of God's people and those he has chosen is going to destroy lofty arguments, accusations, and indictments. It's going to destroy it. It's going to bring down those altars that have been erected. It's going to destroy deceitful doctrines and briefs and judgments. It's going to destroy it. That spirit of truth is going in to the heart of matters and into the vein of situations right now of a national matter in the church in your lives and it is dealing and evicting that spirit of deception and witchcraft and rebellion. For Samuel himself said rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And it's destroying it. Because the kingdom has already been torn away from Saul. It's already been torn away. There's no anointing. There's a physical seat without an anointing. David had an anointing without a physical seat. Saul had a physical seat without the anointing. The kingdom has been torn away because rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And the Lord thy God, the rebellion that the media is raising right now, the rebellion that part of the church is raising, the rebellion that those in D.C. are raising, the Lord thy God is going to put down and deal with and judge and destroy those rebellions because it is as the sin of witchcraft. And God is issuing judgment against that spirit in the courts of heaven and rectifying the wrongs. And going back past 20 years and 50 years and rectifying history and bringing it into his order of time. For God's order of time is for everything to go from darkness to light. That's why Jewish feasts begin when the sun goes down. Because the darkness must buckle and surrender to the light. In Genesis it says there was evening and then morning one day. The darkness has to give way to the light. And the darkness has raised a rebellion right now and an outcry that has reached the heavenlies. And God has waited and they have been found wanting. Mene, mene, tekel ufarsin. You have been weighed and found wanting in this hour. And now your kingdom shall be divided. Your empire shall be divided. Your media shall be divided. Because you challenged 
openly, arrogantly, rebelliously, and mocked Almighty God in His power and His Son, Jesus Christ. That's why they mock it, because the enemy knows that name carries a power that no other name does. And praise the Lord, we are sanctified by the blood of Jesus Christ and saved and purchased by that. That's the blood that should be running through the United States of America. Not a river of the blood of the innocent that the Lord has now begun to dam up and dry up. Because there's a different blood that should be applied to America. And that's the blood of Jesus. Oh, praise the Lord. I feel the Lord so strong. I'm heating up here. I am completely like heating up as we are talking. But praise the Lord for what he is giving right now. All glory goes to God. Oh, praise the Lord. So as you go forth, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Don't argue with fools. Don't argue with them. Hand them over to God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And we must have that reverence back in the church for God and walk circumspectly before him. He is our father and he loves us very much and he is good. However, he could destroy the earth in a word and we have to show reverence for that. Praise God. We are his children. And tonight, and the Lord is telling me to do this right now. If you have been watching and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and savior, or you walked away from the Lord and you feel him now tugging at you, calling you back. We're going to, we're going to end right now with a prayer. This is the beginning of of your walk with the Lord. This is what this is. All relationships have a beginning. This is it for you. So I want you to repeat after me. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come before you as a sinner, knowing, now knowing that I need a savior. I acknowledge your son, Jesus Christ, came to the earth in the form of a man and he willingly died at Calvary for my sins. He purchased me by the shedding of his blood and he redeemed me back to you, Lord. I ask him to come into my life, come into my heart and be my Lord and savior. From this day forward, I surrender to you, Lord. Have your way in my life. For this moment, I am a new creation in you. In Jesus name, amen and amen. If you said that prayer for the first time or you completely walked away from the Lord and you felt the Lord call you back so strong tonight, please email us at hello at arcofgrace-ministries.com. We would love to help you, get you some resources if we can if we can uh, counsel you a bit. But please let us know. It is so important right now to, to, to go after souls and to teach. A big part of the prophetic mantle is to teach. And much of that has been lacking. And the Lord is going to require that teaching that is the meat for the people to grow and for the sheep that have gotten sick off of a watered down candy cotton word that has been given by bought and paid for ministers. They need that meat right now so their bodies can heal and their souls can heal and their minds can heal. They need it. So just keep that in mind uh, as we go forth. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, my goodness gracious. Oh, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All glory be to God. So, oh, my goodness. We're going to put this up at the end real quick, though. It's going to be so fast. Um, for Kiwi Strong, I still feel the presence of the Lord. But Kiwi Strong has to do with healing. So this is, this is a good fit. It has to do with healing. I use their pain patches. I have to tell you their pain patches actually work. They really do work. And so basically you could go to kiwistrong.com and use promo code ARC. They have many other types of patches that you can look at and choose from, but I can tell you that they absolutely work because we use them. So praise the Lord for that. Okay. Oh my goodness. I still feel the presence of the Lord. I can still feel him. So we'll just let it linger for a minute because we thank the Lord and we bless his holy name and we praise him for all he has done and he is going to do. This is going to be 
a crucial national day of prayer coming up. Crucial. Crucial for the nation. God is expecting the nation to come together and pray. He's expecting it. He's requiring it. And we need it. So praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's like the last thing. Praise God. I feel the release now. The last thing he wanted to say. And we bless the name of the Lord and we praise his holy name. Praise the Lord with your mouth. Praise him with your mouth. Change the way you speak. And praise him more than you attack or complain. Because death and life are in the power of the tongue. The enemy knows this. He's built an entire media empire off of releasing death and rebellion and oppression and fear into the masses. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And we as believers have to learn how to use the word and the believer's authority the way Christ did against Satan in the wilderness. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. Man shall not live by bread alone. America shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Thank you, Lord. We receive that.